Gennaro Gattuso, forget Carlos Tevez and his bulldog-like approach. This Italian stallion had that dog in him. A no-nonsense CDM in his playing days, but can he make it as a manager? Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Valencia, a former Spanish giant who have been struggling in recent years. With constant club ownership drama and manager turnover, this season they've acquired the 2006 World Cup winner services in hopes that he can guide them to the top of Spain and conquer Europe. European football. Today we take charge of the Batza Valencia with Cattuso at the helm of the Estadio Mastaya with tunnel vision of taking this club to the pinnacle and achieving overall dominance with Cattuso's guidance. With an overall transfer budget to work with of just shy of 60 million pounds, this summer is going to get interesting. Playing the 4-1-3-1-1 formation, a lineup I have rarely seen used but I guess it takes advantage of stacking the midfield. The club legend, youth academy product Jose Guy the left back is the current captain of the squad. However, there is a nice mix of youth and experience that Catuzo gets at his disposal with the likes of Yunus Musa, ex La Masia wonder kids like Gonzalez and Iliax Moriba, and the old souls that are going to provide some wisdom in the locker room Gabriel Paulista and big boy Edison Cavani up top. We also have some viable options in and off the bench. However, with the right leadership, smart signings, this team can go to the moon and back. And in order to play Catuzo ball, we are implementing a constant pressure defensive style, fast build up play and forward runs chance creation. That is Gattuso ball in full effect. Another major issue we have with this team is that there is no commitment with some first team players like Nico Gonzalez, Moriba, they are all loan deals, Justin Clivert as well. I'm only just realizing this now. We need to either get players that are more committed to the club or we need to make these deals permanent. Get on his good side and he'll love you forever but don't you dare cross him because you won't forget about it. It's going to be tough as the roster is in complete shambles but we'll check out our youth academy if we've got any hidden gems in here which i don't think we do unfortunately no spaniards or italians no homegrown talent to work with i just don't really see any first team potential in them but marius jensen will promote the norwegian just because he has 70 or 94 potential let me know what other manager club combination rebuilds you want to see on the channel you know what it is when it comes to these icon manager rebuilds we've had to activate a squad file and it's let every single icon special player legend out in to the world. So there was multiple Balaks, multiple Bajos. Pretty much lets our whole career mode save. Every club picked them up on a free. It makes these rebuilds so much harder and it just adds a different element. Now Gattuso's first major piece of business has to come in the form of a brand new defender. We have gone out and picked up the Frenchman Lacroix. I feel French today. I want to say the full French pronunciation but he has arrived from Wolfsburg the young 22 year old. I feel like he could partner up Paulista perfectly and just be a tall defensive pre an absolute unit that is not going to tolerate anything as we have brought him in on a little bit of a swap deal we included Comare plus 18.4 million pounds in order to entice Wolfsburg to sell and that's got us an A rating a full game face scan and everything a pacey center back that is going to be impossible for attackers to get by I love Jose Gaia's security and just overall presence on that left hand side but on the other wing back flank I want an attackive progressive right back that is going to cause havoc up and down that right hand inside. Gattuso saw no further option than to pursue Vanderson from Monaco. The young Brazilian who can also play at right mid but our plans with him for now is to be our permanent right back. He's got an amazing ceiling our brand new number 24 as we picked him up from the French outfit included Falquier in the deal plus 14.1 million pounds and again it's back to back at his baby. We had to sacrifice one of our own but he wasn't really part of our first team plan so Vanderson who is technically a right mid will be training the Brazilian to be a right wing back. He's going to be the next Cafu for us, mark my words. You're probably going to be surprised that we haven't opted for an Italian in this position. However, we've made it known that we're interested in a brand new beating heart and soul of the team, a proper CDM that is going to run the engine room, dominate the midfield. And we have splashed the cast for a brand new Argentine with a brand new game face scan, Varela, a brand new number 20, who's a CDM slash centre mid, a box to box defensive unit that is just going to sit ahead of the defence, provide that protection and be an overall bad boy in the middle of the park. He's got a neck tattoo. That's how you know he's legit. Arriving from Boca Juniors for 11.7 million pounds. Three in a row, baby. Three in a row. We've dipped into the Argentine talent pool and starting to invest our resources in some South American ballers. And you better get used to it too because that's not going to stop right here with Ezequiel Zeballos. Zeballos, Zeballos, whatever you want to call him. He is a brand new up and coming Argentine who again has impressed for the national team 
team on youth level and has finally made it into FIFA 23. There's going to be a brand new right winger. The new Wonder Kids with game face scans are looking absolutely amazing here in Karimo this year. And Gattuso standing proudly next to him. It's a little bit of a swap deal as well because we've just gone for a straight swap. No transfer fee involved. It's a flat out trade. Out with the old, in with the new, and it's four rays running. The board are falling head over heels with our transfer negotiation skills right now as Samuel Castillejo packs his bags to South America. We've acquired Zabayos who can play on either side of the wings and is going to be our main man showing great potential. After a flurry of purchases, it's time to say goodbye. We've made our first major sale here at Valencia's Gattuso Farewells. I don't even know who that is. Hugo Guilliamon. Yeah, couldn't even recognize him without his game face scam, but he is departing to Hoffenheim for 9.1 million pounds. The Spaniard deemed surplus to requirements and just not good enough. When the career mode interviewer has a game face scan and you don't, I think you know it's time to go. It's another one headed out the door. We've got some quick fire sales going on just to raise a few funds. And this time it is Marcos Andre, the Brazilian striker for 4.65 million pounds departing to the French outfit Ajaccio. Another one bites the dust. We're getting rid of as much dead wood as possible and getting some more transfer funds in our piggy bank. This time Catuso bids farewell to our boy Cesar Tarega. He now makes the move to Luzerne for just under a million pounds. What on earth is going on? in the House of Commons. Guys, you're gonna have to help me with this one down in the comments below because I think I've encountered yet another career mode glitch, just uncovered it. You might be thinking we've done some dodgy things behind the scenes, but trust me, I've just innocently stumbled upon this with Catuzo and I'm just as confused as you guys are. We've signed Brahim Diaz. He's at AC Milan in real life, but actually in game. Okay, the hazards are here again. We have got this glitch. I thought this was fixed, but no, not quite. I saw Brahim Diaz back at Real Madrid. He's currently Currently just wearing a free agents jersey in his presentation our brand new number 42 yeah I'm just as confused I've got so many questions right now and this is where I'm hoping hoping you guys can come in because we've picked up Brahim Diaz at Real Madrid Milan terminated his contract and we offered 20,000 pounds not 20 million 20,000 and Carlo Ancelotti accepted that he was fine with that deal going through I saw him valued at 1 billion pounds in the transfer hub and thought something was up Gattuso is just out here breaking the game achieving the impossible now I'm even more confused guys let me know down in the comments below what do you think triggered this so now we can shortlist him in the transfer hub and now he's actually at Milan has this just mean I've agreed to deal with him next season or in January my mind is running at a million miles per hour I just thought I got away with a bargain there he's not appearing in the squad hub either so false alarm guys I think I've just been scammed I've had to have a long hard think about these two because we've had to shift a few players out the door in order to compensate for making Aliax Moriba and Nico Gonzalez's deals permanent. I wanted to make a statement, show our intent as a club by snapping up these two young La Masia Youth Academy prospects. Barca didn't have faith in them. So we're going to go ahead and agree a deal as it's been a swap deal here for Nico Gonzalez. We included Almeria in the deal plus 8.9 million pounds for the young 20 year old Spanish prospects. However, with Moriba, it was pretty clear cut. More straightforward as the former Spaniard turned Guinean. Our midfield monster is committed to Valencia. It is going to be a 5.6 million pound transfer fee agreed between us and RB Leipzig. A couple of minor deals going down here. We are loaning out some of the youth prospects on the fringe of the squad. Not really going to get any game time or minutes in this opening season. And that includes Marius Jensen, the youth academy product we promoted off to Sarpsborg for a two-year deal. And another talent treated to the loan out system. It is going to be Diego Lopez now departing to Preston for a two-year spell. We got this one over the line right before our season started. It is the young upcoming Spanish centre back could be a, a new wonder kid on the scene. I just feel like he's really underrated right now. We've loaned him out Cristian Mosquera on a 12 month loan spell to Nantes in France but hopefully these loan spells can do wonders for their growth and development. Now we've done everything in our power to give this deal the green light. We've just got it over the line and pretty much drained the transfer budget dry. We've somehow managed to agree a deal with Jurgen Klopp to prize over the Portuguese talent Carvalho. Fabio Carvalho arriving from Merseyside for 7.3 million pounds plus Tony Lato headed the other way. They were interested in the Spanish left back. Thanks to our right mid department being sorted, we will be converting Carvalho into a left winger. Simultaneously, he can act as a backup cam, but his versatility is absolutely outstanding for his age. I love everything about him. I think he fits the long-term project and I think Atuzo can get the best out of him. I just wish the young gun had a game face scan, that's all. With no last minute deadline deal plans, that leaves us with a current 
current budget of four million pounds, so nothing much we could really do in this market with that. After just one summer of Gattuso being in charge, there has been a lot of change happening here at Valencia and our brand new 41113 formation. We've more just integrated our new signings into the starting 11, converted a few positions like Yusuf Musa. We're planning for him to be our next star striker after Cavani. We've converted Felix Correa into a backup left back after Lato's departure, as both Carvalho and Benderson are still undergoing their position conversions. The constant pressure high work rate system is destined to take Valencia by storm here in Spain, so let's see how they get on in Season 1. The debut campaign for Gattuso at Valencia has finally come to a close, and I'm not going to say I'm over the moon with our progress, but in the league table, we have finished in 6. Collecting 64 points, at least it's better than Valencia in real life right now. They're currently in 10th halfway through the season. It's European football, at least Conference League, I believe. Still quite the margin between us and the top four, so we've definitely got that to work on for the next few seasons, but it's Real Madrid winning the title again on the final day. As we take a look at the foot of the La Liga table, it is Cadiz, Mallorca, and Almeria all getting relegated. Now over in the Supercopa, we participated in the semi-finals and got knocked out 3-2. The Copa de España, it was Athletic Bilbao to take that one home 3-1 against Osasuna, and we were eliminated quite early on in the round of 16 to Barca 3-1. Again, like I said, we had no European competition this year, just domestic football to focus on as Real Madrid win the Brian Diaz Champions League final derby 1-0. The Europa League saw a Der Klassiker with Borussia Dortmund taking that one home 3-0 against the Bavarians and it's West Ham to win the Europa Conference League 2-0 against Slavia Praha in the big dance. But how did our team do? Individually, did our new signings make a difference? Who were the main protagonists? Let's see who Gattuso relied on this season and it's Fabio Carvalho, one of our last pickups in the transfer window. The Portuguese with 16 goals and 6 assists, making that left wing spot his own. The 20 year old out golden boot winner, a plus 6 to his overall, nearly at that 80 rating. Meanwhile, the new boy Ezequiel Zabayos with 10 goals and 6. The Argentine on the right hand side receiving a plus 6 as well, so the growth is there. However, I think you can tell it's Edison Cavani's last rodeo. The 36 year old with a minus 3 to his overall, 9 goals and 3 assists, still some decent output from the Uruguayan, but I think it might be time to move on for El Matador as Yunus Musa. We converted him into a center forward and he's going to take up that striker role next season, replacing Cavani. Already claiming himself 10 goal contributions this season. Meanwhile, Hugo Dudo, probably one of the best names in our team, has surprisingly earned himself either some competition in the striker or left wing spot. Seven goals and four assists for him. The captain, Jose Gaia, leading by example with four goals and four. And Vanderson, now officially a right back with two goals and two. But I like our deep line playmaker making some significant progress. Meanwhile, well, Nico Gonzalez, we made the Barca talent a permanent deal and it paid in dividends with 12 goal contributions. A couple of players returning on loan for next season as we take a look at our goalkeeper, the main man in between the six, Maramar Stabili. He scored himself seven clean sheets and a plus two to his overall, whilst our highest valued asset on the transfer market is Maxence Lacroix, who has actually gone up a plus four, now at an 81 overall. That's a surprise. It's take, caught me off guard. I'm glad this investment has paid off. And the Frenchman is living up to the hype. That's our season recap. Rome wasn't built in a day, or whatever they say, but it's a pretty decent showing for Gattuso's debut campaign here in Spain. Looking forward to making his European managerial debut in season two. We're going to transition over, and hopefully we don't suffer from second season syndrome. I hope we get provided with the budget in order to compete in multiple competitions, and that is almost double. It's pretty much double from season one. 120 million pounds. Gattuso is greeted with an absolute war chest, and with this financial freedom, we can reinforce the squad. Gattuso's gonna be up to no good this summer. We not only have an aging problem in our attack with Cavani, but our defensive department isn't exactly youth prospects either. We've got Gabriel Paulista, who let's just say isn't aging like a fine wine. The Brazilian's entering his mid-30s and he's gonna deteriorate. The poor lad's welcoming in his replacement right now. We have pursued the Serbian from Serie A. It's Fiorentina's Milenkovic. Currently playing at the World Cup right now. He'll be joining us taking that brand new number six and will be partnering up with LaCroix at the back as we agree to deal with Laviola for 32.7 million pounds. No face scan, unfortunately. However, he was probably one of my targets for season one. Just unable to afford him at his full value at 25 years of age. He's about to enter his prime. It's going to be a guaranteed starter for us week in, week out. Gattuso needed a hard man, a rock solid defender at the back. But with this signing, we're leaning more towards his homegrown roots. I'm surprised we haven't made one by now, but it's our first Italian signing. A new midfield sensation, an 
an Italian maestro to join us in the middle of the park. We needed some backup just in case we had any injuries and suspensions battling on multiple fronts. We need to improve our depth this season. We've done exactly that by introducing Nicolo Rovella. The youth talent was on loan at Monza. We picked him up from Juve for 24.9 million pounds. He's been on Gattuso's radar. Not quite the hard man. A bit more finesse about his game. He's got a bit of flair about him and he's going to provide a Gonzalez a bit of competition in the middle of the park. He's an exciting prospect and we just had to do it. I won't go overboard with the Italian signings, but it felt wrong with Gattuso not to sign one of them. Here he is. Talking about depth and backup, we're really focusing on that this season. Improvements all over the park right here as we invest in a backup right mid slash left midfielder. We're welcoming yet another player from Wolfsburg, scouting a lot in the Bundesliga and finding some hidden gems I haven't really used before in career mode. So this is exciting for me. Gattuso's recruited an Austrian wonder kid with a game face scan for 29.1 million pounds. Welcome to the club, Patrick Wimmer. Or Patrick Wimmer, Wimmer. Forgive me on my German-Austrian pronunciation. But our brand new number 23 is going to provide some cover for Tobias and Cavallo on either side of the flank. You guys are probably taken aback right now. Three signings deep this summer and we haven't made a swap deal. This is unlike Sir BCHD. Gattuso is, you know, doing things his own way. We're continuing our loan deal program, trying to get some of these youth talents some minutes abroad as we finally ship out a youth prospect here at Valencia, Pablo Gonzalez. He's on a 12-month loan spell over at Nantes in France. It's our first major farewell this season. We've brought in a lot of talent, been on a mini little shopping spree, but it's time to free up the wage bill and bring in a few more resources. This time, it's a couple of loonies headed out the door. We've had Esquerdo off to Cincinnati for 800k. Some other deals going on like Uros Racic for 11.5 million pounds. We sold him for his base valuation to Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's deemed surplus to requirements and the farewells, the departures are coming in thick and fast. As we have to say goodbye to Jose out on a two-year loan deal, the versatile centre-back will be playing in the Netherlands with FC Twente. And Jorge Sayens, another piece of dead, will £1.75 million as Kobert Haben pick up his services. Now you guys know our financial situation. We weren't limited on a budget this year. We didn't have to go delving in for some bargains. But I just found Ola Aina on a free contract. I mean, he was in the free agents, actually. My bad. The former Torino defender, the Nigerian. He's going to apply some depth and also just a great utility option in off the bench. Could play a left wing back, left mid, right mid, and it's just a smart signing to make. A free signing is a good signing in my book. I've actually done something here I haven't done in a while, and that's activate a release clause. And I've opted for a backup goalkeeper position I didn't really think I had to attend to for a while, but we've brought in some experience. It's going to, you know, lift the average age of the squad up, provide some wisdom to the youngsters in the locking room, in the training pitch, and here we've got Walter Benitez, the Argentine shot stopper. He'll be arriving from Nice, and he suits that value. Valencia Orange. Right now, he's currently higher rated than our first team goalkeeper, our Georgian. But we all know our boy is going to continue to grow nonetheless. He's picked up the brand new number one. I hate to break it to you, mate, but you're not going to be our number one. For 22.1 million pounds, we've just secured his services just in case our main man gets injured. I have really high hopes for this guy. I really do. I think he's an underrated beast at the back. But for now, he's just not first team quality. He's going out on his second loan spell two years in a row. It is Christian Mosquera. Now, parting to Feyenoord over in the Eredivisie for a one-year loan spell. You never know with these youngsters. They might just come back from their loan deals super juiced up and their growth and potential just goes through the roof. We've also managed to ship out yet another one of our younger talents on a one-year loan deal. This time, it's Jesus Vazquez, now joining Bayer Leverkusen for 12 months. It's not the European competition we want to participate in, but it's a significant milestone nonetheless. Gattuso has been drawn into Group H with Valencia coming up against Ferengova, whatever, I think that's the Hungarian team, FC Sion and Norgeland. Here is how our starting 11 is looking for season two. The strongest it's looking on paper with Milenkovic joining our back line. New boy Rovella replaces Moriba in that center mid third place starting spot with the likes of Hugo Duro and Vima all coming off the bench. Will this squad be able to compete on multiple fronts and still be successful? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is a piece of silverware right there. We have flipped the switch and just gone demon mode this season. Yeah, that's right. A bloody double up at that. The news article we just saw said that we won La Liga. However, once we look at the actual standings, we've finished in second somehow, either on goal, well, it is on goal difference, but on head-to-head, -head, I assume against Atletico Madrid. I don't know who to believe at this point, but I'm just gonna say we finished runners-up, despite the game thinking we won two trophies this year. As Real Madrid and Barcelona severely underperform, we finished above them and are clear as we take a look at the bottom end of the table. It is Raul Oviedo, Granada, 
Qatar and Elche all get them relegated to the second tier. Over in the Copa de España, it was a derby and all Madrid affair with 1-0 going to the league champions, I guess, as we were knocked out to the eventual champions 4-4 on away goals. It's the trophy you all saw. Definitely won this one. Thanks to a 3-2 victory, a five-goal thriller in the big dance, we came out top of our group and eliminated the likes of Bodo Glimmer in the round of 16, defeated Feyenoord and took down Lazio 4-3. Over in the Europa League, though, competition will skip and go straight to the Champions League thanks to our fourth place finish. It was Manchester United to win 3-1 against Sevilla in the final. And over in the Champions League, it's the competition we've qualified for. It's Manchester City defeating Barcelona 2-1 to take home the European crown. Technically, so far, we're Spanish champions, European champions, but there is still so much more work to do. Let's take a look at this current state. What was the overall progression this season? No second season syndrome whatsoever. However, we did experience some sort of injury crisis with the likes of Ezekiel Zabios, our best performer, our MVP, with double figures in both goals and assists. Getting injured with a broken elbow, he still somehow managed to pull off 38 goal contributions. Our Argentine, who has been probably the signing of the rebuild so far, alongside Fabio Carvalho, it just proves how much in this formation, Gattuso is relying on his attacking wingers to cut inside and cause chaos. The Portuguese attack and playmaker with 23 goals, 12 assists. Another outstanding campaign from him, and Yunus Musa awarded a plus four to his overall. His first full season as a center forward slash striker, 13 goals and four assists for the American. And Nicolo Rovella, another player on the medical table right now. Double figures in both departments, but his season finished early. Dynamic potential is well and truly back, ladies and gentlemen. We got Nico Gonzalez, eight goals and nine assists. Hugo Duro off the bench with eight goals and two. It's 12 goal contributions from our deep line playmaker, Alan Varela. And Edinson Cavani still proving his worth at 37. He experienced a minus five. No takers for the Uruguayan as he got himself five goals in off the bench. An underrated star that we received back from his loan spell this season, Cohen Dredi, the Frenchman with nine goal contributions in his 19 appearances. Patrick Vimmer also had a pretty decent campaign, now up to an 82 goals and three assists for the new boy as Iliax Moriba definitely feeling the uh, effects of Rovella being our main starting center mid. Our Georgian with a plus four, 12 clean sheets and has well and truly overtaken Walter Benitez. Relegated to our second choice keeper, the development plans, the training, it is all coming together so nicely. Fabio Carvalho with an 131 million pound market valuation, still at only 21. This kid is a star boy, a generational talent and Gattuso is transforming him into a monster. It's our season recap confirming that we ran into another glitch and we weren't really champions of La Liga finishing in second place. That's been our wrap up, transitioning over into season three and it's Champions League debut time, baby. Gattuso is cooking up a storm over here in Valencia. I think it's time for the brand new Spanish giants on the block to take over Europe. We're three years deep and Valencia, let's see what kind of budget the board give us here. 168 million pounds. Now that is a whole heap of cash to work with. Now it's our first acquisition of season three. I decided to go for a bit of left wing cover, a versatile attack. It is Hamed Junior Traore. We've made things official. The 24-year-old Ivorian is in talks with another club, so we had to beat them to the punch. Gattuso needs to get his man. We had a couple players leave on pre-contracts, like our third-choice goalkeeper. Cavani's contract expired. So we just need to improve the overall squad depth. Now bringing our total roster number up to 28. It is a fee agreed with Sassuolo for £41.3 million. He is just the perfect impact super sub to bring in off the bench. A secret weapon. Nonetheless, he takes out number seven, so welcome to the club, mate. I've only just come to realize that Varela is our only out and out CDM at the club. So, in order to compete in multiple fronts, and also if we do end up suffering an injury crisis, we've got some quality backup. This time, we have opted for Thuram, the French defensive mid arriving from Nice. We agreed a fee with the Southern French club for 30 million pounds on the dot. I don't know if he's related to Marcus Thuram, if they're brothers, if they're cousins, I don't know what's going on there. But all that matters is that he's going to be our second choice CDM here at Valencia. We're building into a new era here with Gattuso. We've only made two little signings and then finished it all off with a dry loan spell, a two-year deal for Diego Lopez departing to Fulham. It's been one of the most uneventful transfer windows, just bolstering our backup brigade, but it is what it is. With a surplus of funds still to spend, we managed to, you know, keep players happy, sign some of our stars on brand new deals, just a heap of admin work behind the scenes in order to keep our first squad happy. One thing I love at the moment is just our depth. I've created a second team sheet right here just to showcase to you guys the backup squad we can field. Two starting 11s that could perfectly get the job done. As the lads will be embarking on their first ever Champions League campaign, at least under our guidance, as we've been drawn into Group C alongside.
alongside Chelsea, Celtic, and FC Basel. It's time to get a move on. Season 3, summer's come and gone. It is well and truly upon us. Can our unit deal with the Champions League pressure? I guess we'll find out. After the game sold us a dream last season with La Liga glory, we came oh so close again this time, finishing up third and not runners up. Real Madrid and Barca got their act together and it's Real Madrid to take home the title. It really was our big chance to do an underdog story last season, but we didn't manage to capitalize as we still finish in the top four with Champions League football next season. It's heartbreaking to see, but at least it's proven that we're getting going in the right direction as it's Mallorca, Real Valladolid and Girona all getting relegated. Over in the Supercoppa, again, it was an all Madrid affair with Atletico winning out 3-1 as we were eliminated in the semi-finals 4-2 to Real Madrid. The Copa de España result just proves we're really not getting anywhere in these domestic cups as we were eliminated again to the eventual champions Atletico 5-3 on aggregate in the semis. Domestically, we really could have done better. However, over in the Champions League, we excel, knocking out Chelsea in the group stages, finishing on top of our group alongside Celtic and making it out into the round of 16 where we faced Marseille and beat them 5-2 on aggregate, progressing through to the quarters and that's where we got knocked out to Manchester United. 4-3 against the Red Devils. We dropped the ball in the home leg and again, you guessed it, we were eliminated to the eventual champions of the whole thing. United taking it home 3-1 in the big dance against Real Madrid. The Europa League saw a 2005 rematch Champions League final with Milan defeating Liverpool, getting revenge 2-1 and the Europa Conference League. We couldn't go back to back in that competition which I didn't really aim for but it's Wolfsburg to win 2-0 against Michelin in the final. I think it's fair to say that Catuzzo's Valencia have officially announced themselves on the world stage. Probably one or two world class pieces away from winning the league. We have got some generational ballers on our roster and it's none other than Fabio Carvalho again coming through with an MVP season. Double figures in both goals and assists. Our Portuguese hero is a top gun at the moment. 31 goals, 13 assists. That is 44 goal contributions in 54 appearances. This man is an absolute superstar. As our American dream, Yunus Musa, we finally converted him into a fully pledged striker with 20 goals and 3 assists this season. Only a 1 plus growth to his overall. This man has well and truly surpassed all my expectations as it's Ezequiel Zabayos with 16 goals and 8. We had Nicolo Rovella hitting double figures in both departments, getting that juicy plus 4 to his overall. And Keferen Thuram, who are planned to be a backup CDM, he managed to get some significant game time alongside Patrick Wimmer, 12 goals and 2 assists for the Austrian. Our backup brigade coming in handy and the squad rotation is evident as Alan Varela really took a backseat this season in terms of overall production. It proves that when you bring in a bit of competition into the side, it really forces players to actually perform as Nico Gonzalez really took a backseat this season with only 32 appearances, one goal and six assists for our homegrown talent. As Hamed Junior Traore only got himself one goal in 16 appearances. We had a couple of players out on loan, of course, and scrolling our way down to our goalkeeper, the Georgian in between the sticks with eight clean sheets. As Iliax Moriba, you can see dynamic potential, not really doing him justice, not satisfied by being a side piece. He wants to be um, the main piece in the jigsaw. Unfortunately, that is just not the case as we have our one and only highest rated asset that no one really comes close. Easily stealing the show right here at Valencia, valued at 173.5 million pounds on the transfer market. It's been a roller coaster of a season with a deep Champions League run, crazy growth and development, superstars being born here under Gattuso's guidance. However, we've got no silverware to show for it, so it's do or die here in season four. We need to start claiming some titles. Time is ticking, people. Time is money. And for this campaign, our fourth season in charge, we get gifted with an abundance 218 million pounds to spend. Yet again, a good chunk of that is probably going to go into play wages and assigning new contracts because for the time being, we pretty much have a perfect squad assembled. Thanks to one of our main leaders in the back line, Gabriel Paulista, getting older, deteriorating in overall, we've decided to bring in a brand new defensive reinforcement. A solid unit, another present defender at the back, and it's yet another South American, a Brazilian for a Brazilian. Gattuso's recruited Bremer for the back line, who's played many years in Serie A. He's arriving right here from Leicester City, so he's got Premier League experience under his belt, and it's a flat-out transfer fee for £76 million. Pounds. No game face scan for him, unfortunately, but a player who does have a game face scan, it is Nuno Mensch, or Nuno Mendes, whatever you want to call him. We're bringing in a left-back upgrade, just because Jose Gaia, I know he's the captain, he's been loyal to Valencia since day one, but he's not going to grow and improve. He's already past his peak, and we need a capable left-back. The Portuguese talent will be arriving, and I know it's unfortunate, but business is business. Don't take it personally. £86.2 million pounds to acquire his services from Los Blancos. And by doing this, by pulling off this 
move, it's also 3,000 IQ because we're weakening the title challenges. We're weakening fellow opposition. Due to the fact that Guy has been replaced in our starting 11, we needed a brand new captain and we've awarded the captain's armband to Varela in the beaten heart and soul of the midfield. The CDM will be the brand new club captain for season four. Our second stint in the Champions League has arrived upon us and we've been drawn into Group D alongside Europa League champions Milan, RB Salzburg and Basaksa here. So definitely one we're looking at top with two major improvements to our back line. We definitely had a defensive focus transfer we'd know this time around. Hoping to keep a few more clean sheets. It's left us with about 41 million pounds left in the piggy bank. And our starting first team 11 looking a little bit like this. Couple of players out on international duty. However, Bremer and Nuno Mensch both make their starts in our first team. So we're going to have to wait and see if Gattuso's boys are the real deal this season or they're just European pretenders here in season four. It's the Madrid clubs again being inevitable in La Liga. And we lose out on the final day to Atletico and again we finish runners-up coming so close to the title was Villarreal and Real Madrid finishing the top four We got 85 points actually got less losses than the champions Barcelona were down in six as we scroll towards the bottom end of the table It is Granada, Levante and Real Oviedo getting relegated We might have failed in the league four years in a row But we have finally taken home our first piece of domestic silverware It's the Copa de España 5-0 in the final against Udi Almeria it was an absolute demolition job from Gattuso's boys. All the big boys must have gotten knocked out early and we took our chance to take home the crown. We're on the precipice of achieving that sacred Spanish double. However, over in the Champions League Group D, we ended up topping it by 12 points, making it out of the group with Milan alongside us in the round of 16. We got matched up against Chelsea and took them down at 3-2 as over in the quarters, it's against Roma and we took them down 3-2 in aggregate as well as passing through to the semis against PSG. It is yet another Another 3 2 scoreline. What is with this team and 3 2 scorelines? It's our favorite aggregate score, and it was the lucky five goal thriller that got us through every single round. To so the big dance in 2026, I don't even think we're ready for this. Up against Manchester City in the final. This is who we lost the league to, by the way, guys. Like, come on, Diego Simeone, give it a rest. He's just absolutely abused these icon free agent signings. Back line of Nesta and Maldini, Hullet, Lampard, and Balak in the midfield, Shearer, Muller, Perez, all leading the Line. Beating this team to the title would have been no mean feat. It's all come down to this though. Taking a glance at our roster before the Champions League final and our top goal scorer this season was Ezequiel Zeveos with 41 goals and 7 assists. This man has just completely taken over putting up Carvalho-esque numbers even better with 48 goal contributions in 56 appearances. The Argentine completely ripping it up on that right hand side as we've unearthed pretty much the next Messi and the next Ronaldo in this team. I've only just realised a Fabio Carvalho with 23 goals and 16 assists. One of two players to achieve double figures in both departments. That's 39 goal contributions in 56 appearances for the 23 year old. And he is at 92 overall. The highest rated player in this team. The MVP and he's arguably going to go down as one of the best signings in this video. One of the best signings in rebuild history as we had our converted Yunus Musa from center mid, right mid to a striker. The American didn't put a foot wrong this season with 21 goals and 13 assists. He has skyrocketed in growth the last two seasons and I'm so happy to see his progression. Another player I'm satisfied about in the middle of the park holding it down is Nicolo Rovella. Nine goals and ten assists. Under an Italian legend's guidance, he's doing him proud as our captain, our main man Alan Varela. Five goals and three assists for the Argentine. Nico Gonzalez also putting in a solid shift through the middle of the park. You could Duro off the bench also being a viable option. As Jose Gaia, our former club captain, club legend, going down with seven goal contributions this season. Our main man in between the sticks, Marash Davili played every single game this season and scored himself 17 clean sheets. Only one player over 90 overall, but pretty much the rest of our starting 11 is 88 plus. It's a world-class first team, a starting 11 that has taken Europe by storm. I guess that's what happens when you keep a core group of players together, let them, you know, develop that chemistry, gel, and form a formidable system as, of course, our highest rated asset right here. Fabio Carvalho hitting 157 million pounds. Meanwhile, well, we've got four other players to surpass the nine-figure range. This group, this team is special. They've gone from strength to strength and could quite possibly go down as one of my favorite teams I've built. I'm even tempted to go further with them after this video. Honestly, I was expecting maybe five or six seasons to complete this rebuild, but Cattuzos Valencia have proven us wrong Have found themselves in the big European dance. Up against this Manchester City side with the icons in the likes of Luis Figo, Seedorf, Cannavaro at the back, Roberto Carlos, Combined with
with present day Manchester City wonder kids and superstars like Foden and Haaland, it is going to be an incredibly tough battle on their home soil here at Wembley. We've got a date with Destiny. Today's the day, tonight's the night to write their name amongst the stars and shoot this former Spanish giant into European glory. What they've craved for so many decades now, the power is in their own hands. They need to show up tonight and hopefully make the ribbons on that trophy orange and white. The grit's there, the growth and determination has been evident for seasons now and it is time to get things kicked off as Erling Haaland gets us underway. Catching Man City off guard here, Rovella can slip through our boy Carvalho who just gets it past Cannavaro and our second shot, Cannavaro again is there and Zabayos had a shot on goal. Edison got there quickly and we're already causing some danger. Finds Carvalho back again. We got Nico Gonzalez who backs it over to Rovella and he just got trigger happy there, sending warning shots to Edison. The legendary names on this pitch tonight shouldn't be underestimated. Luis Figo, and it's just back and forth at the moment. Counter attack after counter attack, and Phil Foden gets targeted by Rovella. How is that a foul ref? The Portuguese wonder kid all alone, waiting for cavalry to arrive. Yunus Musa, a classic counter attack going underway here as Gonzalez. Has to shift it out wide. Yunus Musa offloads. It is Carvalho on the fed air shot. And outside the box, he just misses the target. That has been one of our most fluid attacks so far. And the counter nearly paid off. Too Shemeni with a lot of space to work with here. Our defense has suddenly opened up as Luis Figo gets taken down. But March Davili. Nico Gonzalez, all of a sudden, Yunus Musa with a few skill moves. Tricks the defenders. Carvalho now one-on-one -on -one with Cannavaro, who takes him on the outside. It's another finesse shot. And Edison this time has to palm it away for a corner. Our Portuguese. Portuguese star boy giving the Man City defense so many things to think about as Vanderson whips this one in from the corner and it's another parry away Carvalho with the header this time. Gattuso looking extremely frustrated on the sideline. Thuram's trying to calm him down. Ain't nothing stopping him from just stripping off his manager gear and getting on the pitch himself. Now another headed opportunity goes away. Rovella now it's Milenkovic trying the audacious as we go into the sheds nil nil. A couple of major chances for us. We kind of should be one nil up. However it is all square headed into the sheds. Gattuso is bound to give him a legendary half time team talk to kick him into gear for the second 45. Bro, look at our team. This constant pressure gig, it is completely draining our players. Stamina levels are at an all-time low and we still got a second half to play. Over to Gonzalez who pulls out a few skill moves and now Bremer, it's a through ball inside to Carvalho who hits the crossbar on an impossible angle. He still managed to somehow find the frame. Back on over, he finds Foden in the middle. And our defense starting to feel the effects of this constant pressure. Now Erling Haaland on the follow-up. Marstavili couldn't parry that one away. And it goes straight into the Norwegian's path to tuck that one home. He's done nothing all night. And Man City get their first clear-cut opportunity. Put that one into the back of the net. Into an empty net. And silence us after so many attacks. We fail to take our chances. And all the Man City legends need is one. Oh no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Marstavili, get back. And he does well, the Georgian. Novella now can find out a ball out wide to Zabayos. Zabayos over the top. It is Yunus Musa all alone. One on one. The touch let him down. It is now a substitute. Time to take off Nico Gonzalez, who has completely drained the stamina. And it's an attack and sub. Hammer Junior Triore to come on and make the impact. Game a few chances. And Man City have taken theirs. Now we'd another, we need another big chance. Rovella to win the ball back. It is Yunus Musa who just needs to hold it up. Can find Carvalho on this left-hand side. He's been quiet in this second half. Rovella to fire it through. Can Rovella get the shot off? He tries again. Roberto Carlos fails to clear. And our Italian stallion equalizes in the 77th minute after pushing forward. Counter-attack after counter. And our boys finally prevail. Never giving up. Stamina completely drained. And the boys have pulled through using that Gattuso grit. The bulldog-like approach never fails. Our Super sub put a killer through ball. Triore found our man. He's an unlikely goal scorer, but he does so at the big occasion. Edison had no chances. He smashed that one past him. Roberto Carlos with an absolute mare. And Gattuso celebrates on the sideline. We've got ourselves back into this game. All of a sudden, Haaland's in here. And all of a nope. sudden, Marsh Davili with an absolutely brilliant one on one save. Back on over to Carvalho. We need a good cross in the middle, and no one was there to take it. Win the ball back, though. Vanderson has pushed forward. 
forward, finds a man at the back stick, unmarked, it's Traore. And how does he miss that header? It is the miss of the century from our Ivorian. The goal that could have won us the Champions League final. Zabayos finds the ball back inside, it's Yunus Musa all alone. You had one job. How many chances do these boys need? We now find ourselves with another half an hour of football and potentially penalties. Couple of subs for extra time, it's Musa off for Hugo Duro and Lacroix will be replacing our boy Bremer. Big interception there from Varela who's been our ball winner all night. Rovella can turn provider here as Hugo Duro is fresh. Our Spaniard straight off the bench. And that is what we wanted in the 101st minute. Our homegrown talent, ex-Real Madrid Academy graduate, does it on the biggest of stages at Wembley in the big dance. It's Valencia to take the lead for the first time in this game. Rovella with a killer through ball. Hugo Duro loses his marker. Cannavaro left out in the cold. Tricks Edison, completely sends him the wrong way. Edison couldn't close him down Duro could have written his name into Valencia history right there we've got Zeballos our 42 goal scorer and winger and back again he could be in for more here as Zeballos it's just too easy it is just too easy and when the momentum swings your way that's when you know it's going all for you tonight as the Argentine brings a few pitch invaders onto the field it is getting absolutely raucous here in London and the Man City fans completely silenced within two minutes we've gone 3-1 up two goals just like that you can see why he scored 42 goals this season we've unearthed the next Messi as Gattuso's Valencia already have one hand on the trophy. And Rovella, can we find the fourth? Man City pushed all their men forward. Hugo Duro again with the attempt. Great tackle there as Luis Figo arrives in the box. Man City trying to get one back. And it's the Portuguese legend to get Man City back into this game. Making it a five-goal contest. We're still five minutes left on the clock. We need to be careful here. Man City making their way back into this game. They're not giving up with ease. Let's just hold the ball here. Control the game. Wind down the clock. Take full control. Pass Barcelona tiki-taka football. Man City don't get another chance. And it's that classic 3-2 scoreline that this team absolutely loves in the Champions league they've gone on and done it they've gone all the way before winning la liga one spanish title under their belt one europa conference league and now capping it off with the third and final trophy to finish off the rebuild they are champions of europe and gattuso finally claims glory with the spanish outfit it's been a magical night one of the most exhilarating champions league finals i've played so far here in fifa 23 thanks to our super subs the change from constant pressure back to press after possession loss the stamina was drained early the boys put in a shift and Gattuso ball worked a treat tonight at Wembley Stadium it will be that man Varela in the middle of the park our CDM who we trusted from day one these are Gattuso's players his signings his system and a brand new dynasty being formed here at the Estadio Mestalla that has been the rebuild guys as the trophy celebrations go on at Wembley make sure to drop the video a like down below if you did go on to enjoy subscribe turn on the notifications we're on the road to 130k go and follow me on all my social media Media, the links will be down in the description below. As always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the very next video. Baby, don't walk away from me. Baby, little thing, I need your company. Baby, come and ride with me. Loving on you, how we supposed to be. Well, that's how we supposed to be. Well, that's how we supposed to be. Well, that's how we supposed to be. Baby, just you. So fly, she or the pilot when I'm dressed. Shady hate when I get violent, apply the pressure on the block and I be styling, young and wildin'. See me in the foreign, they be profiling. Gotta do it for the game, gotta stay solid. Already on ten, talking landslide wins. Pretty young thing, living with no guidance. Don't you pull up with your hand out, cause I'm the man now. Play with Shady, that's a man now. Talking murder, you too worried about the